upper body there, guys. Going to be a pretty jack stacked, maxed, and just getting huge workout. I'm, I have decided, I'm going to just film every workout because it's like, do you know what? I, I may as well, I may as well. If I decide not to, I'm probably just being lazy if I'm being honest. But, you know, there's no reason why I can't just like just be a giga giga workload and just like make myself do it so not the biggest issue in the world so guys be prepared for very consistent videos so that, that'd be good another thing i thought i'd mention this just talk about this i have invested and it's quite an expensive item that i've bought is barefoot shoes but specifically like barefoot lifting shoes quite a hefty amount for a pair of shoes i like usually if i buy a pair of shoes I only cost like 30 pounds and that'll last me for a very long time. As I'm talking, I realized that I made a grave error. I need to fix this. All right, there we go. So I talked about this in the previous video, but see how we walk around day to day. Like let's say we walk around, if you work a job, they're practically walking around, you're walking around for like 10 hours a day. Or even if you're just working a normal job, just walking around all the time or you're in school and we're always wearing shoes with heels now if you think about that right if you wear heels it means you need less ankle mobility that's why weightlifting shoes have a bit of a heel so you can squat deeper you have you don't need as much dorsiflexion which is the ankle mobility you need to squat deep and if we're walking around with heels all the time it means our foot doesn't need as much ankle mobility which means if you go to squat now or go to do other activities without like a heeled shoe your ankle mobility is just absolutely horrendous. So I'm going to be transitioning, trying to get all my footwear to barefoot footwear. That way I'm going to have good ankle mobility and build up over time. Along with that, most normal shoes, they like cram your feet in like this. So it like squeezes your feet together, which is not good. In severe cases, you can get like bunions, but that's probably not going to happen. But it is still going to push your feet together. Now, if you think about this in just like a athletic standpoint, if your feet are pushed together, they're not going to be as stable, not going to work as efficiently. Naturally, if you go see like people who just don't wear shoes or like in countries where people don't really wear t these type of shoes, their feet are always like spread out because your feet naturally want to be like spread out like that. That's why if you see someone who always wears Crocs and they only wear Crocs, their feet are like way more spread out. So by doing that, your feet will actually have more stability they'll be more like rugged and the skin will be tougher. So your feet would just be more jacked. So you have, like right now, my feet are like DL feet. Like my feet is like, do you even lift? Do you even train feet, bro? Like, no, my feet are untrained. So that's not a good thing. So I do imagine once I tra do fully transition towards this, I'll just make my feet more jacked, more stable. I have more stability, like a squat or like running or any athletic endeavor that I decide to do. So that is good. The biggest issue, right? is that barefoot shoes are incredibly expensive. They're always like around 100 or 120 pounds, which is just like for, for a pair of shoes, bro, like that is, is actually ridiculous. But, you know, you can't put a price on just like being healthy and having like a functioning body. If I'm ever gonna spend money, it's gonna be on something like that. So it's not the biggest of deals, but I thought I'd mention that to you guys in case any of you guys are versed in barefoot knowledge or whatever because that's what i'm currently doing right now right now is like just it's like quarter past 2 p.m and i'm gonna go work out then i'm gonna get home get a shower then i'm gonna go train jujitsu so i'm gonna i'm gonna be pretty dead i've done this a few times you can still you can still like work out then go straight to jujitsu and you're fine uh you just be a bit tired never do like a sport or like a combat sport then go to the gym because then your your gym session is just going to be really shit so always do gym first and then go and do a thing see having muscle and like wrestling or jujitsu for me right is so overpowered right this guy literally had me in an arm bar and he's not like a weak guy like he's he's like pretty strong for his size right so he's not weak right he has me in the arm bar bro i literally bicep curl his arm bar, right? He's got he's got my arm in the arm bar, bro. Let's see, a bicep curl, that shit. So like incline curls, significant carryover to jujitsu, 
But yeah, I've been really enjoying the combat sports, getting back into it. It's really, really, really fun. Obviously, the main the main goal is always going to be like bodybuilding and just getting really jacked. Once I do get 18 inch arms, I kind of get really big. I don't know, then maybe would I want to focus on something else? Possibly, who knows? But at the moment, it's always going to be bodybuilding first and then everything else comes in second. I would like to compete in jiu-jitsu. I'd make a pretty funny video. I could be like, Jim Bro does jiu-jitsu competition or something. I would definitely train for like another six months before I did that, or at least like a little bit of a while. So when I go in, I'm actually going to do well. I'll just like violate people. But at the moment, I would definitely just get destroyed if I went into one of those. So many bad drivers, bro. And this guy just pulls in front of me when there's just bare space in front of him. I'm just like, so I have to just like drive around him. And I'm just like, bro, why? Why would you do that? that that's why you need to get jacked, guys. So if you ever get into like a car crash because you like come across a really bad driver and he almost murders you, that way, if the car does hit you, you'll actually survive, right? Because you got that much mass, so you need like, your arms to protect you. And also, if you train your neck, like this is like, not, I'm not actually joking here. Right? If you train your neck, like F1 drivers train their neck and shit, and you get in a car crash, or you get any like head trauma, you're more likely to survive if you have got like a, a chunky, strong neck. So that's a survival tip from me, guys. You know, if you wanna survive out here, you know, train your neck, you're less likely to actually die. Hope you guys are having a splendid day and we are starting off with a superset. As usual, we're doing a ring fly push-up and we're supersetting some L-sit pull-ups. If you look at the ring fly push-up, it is 10 times harder than a regular ring push-up. I'm emphasizing trying to push my arms out a bit more and you will see if you look at my elbow position, it's going way beyond where my back is. So it's got a lot of stretch. You'll look at my shoulder position. If you do have bad shoulders, you may want to work up to this a bit more. You won't be able to go that deep. But if you do train yourself to be able to get a really big stretch on the pecs and have a bit more shoulder mobility, this is just such a goated exercise. I thought the regular ring push-ups were good. That takes it to a complete other level. Chest pump is pretty crazy. Now, as I said, supersetting the L-sit pull-up. If you do notice, my hand position was a bit weird. I'm kind of like have to like move my pinky out of the way because I did stave my pinky finger. Therefore, I'm not actually able to apply as much force when I'm pulling. Therefore, I wasn't really able to PR on the L-sit pull-up and some other exercise. I kind of have to do a bit of like a, a Spider-Man grip. Regardless of the minor injuries, we're still going to get the workout done no matter what. After that superset, we are moving on to a cloak-off press, which is basically a, just a wide grip behind the neck press. I'm actually weaker on the wide grip version compared to the narrow grip. The main shoulder movement that I am emphasizing at the moment is the narrower grip behind the neck press. So this is more of an assistance in order to kind of up my frequency for behind the neck pressing without getting like any overuse injuries as if I kept using like the same width of grip that is more likely to cause a bit of an overuse issue but if I just widen the grip a bit allows me to train very similar movement pattern and avoid any of those issues that I may possibly get. We are supersetting the behind the neck press with a wide grip deficit row. This is a very new addition in my workout and I am very enjoying it and also we will do the wide grip deficit row until we can no longer do it. Then we'll kind of move into a pendley row in order to get more reps. And I will also do a bit of partials on this exercise. If you look at my back position, it is a bit rounded, which is fine because I have trained my lower back a lot. So it's very, very strong. Once we have finished that, we are moving on to a giant set. We're starting the giant set off with some pec deck. I tried this previously and I actually rather enjoyed it. Very easy on recovery. Pretty much just a easy exercise just to add in to get a little bit more chest volume. As you know, I'm not really the biggest fan of flies. However, in this case, I do believe it is an effective way to just get in a little bit more chest volume. And as you can see, I'm taking this all the way to failure. After that, we're going straight into 
a machine roll. I'll do any machine roll that I desire on this day. I think I'm going to stick with this because I do like that attachment. Do you know how tons of people chat shit about that attachment that I'm using on this exercise? But it's my favorite like roll attachment by far. I don't know why people hate on it all the time. You can see, bro, looking pretty. Arms are looking pretty goddamn jacked and stacked. And as this is a giant set, after that, we're moving on to some rope pushdowns, but we are spreading the rope. This is more of a warm-up slash preparation for the next tricep exercise that I am doing. I am a big fan of the pushdowns before overhead tricep work philosophy. I'll only do around two to three sets for this giant sets. More often than not, I'll just do two sets for this giant sets. Then the rest of my exercise tend to be three to four sets. Now, moving on to the overhead tricep work, and we are supersetting that with some preacher curls. Now, again, my grip is a little bit weird on this exercise due to my staved pinky finger. Regardless of that, we are were able to get some very good sets in here, taking this all the way to failure as usual, and the spreading of the rope is just a good variation to add in. I also do the short rope on this exercise. I like very high exercise variation. That way, I'm just not going to get injured, bro. Just refuse to get injured just by doing so many different types of exercises that all carry over to each other. As I said, we are supersetting the easy bar, Preacher curl on this exercise. I think I did PR by one rep or so for this, so that is very good. I'm actually quite weak on this exercise. I'm only using around 34 kilos. I do believe that just because I did have to stop training my biceps for a long time. So when I did return to some bicep movements, I was significantly weaker, which is not actually a bad thing. Some people may get discouraged by that, but it just means you're going to be able to like build up a lot faster. You're going to be able to make a lot of progress, which is not the worst thing in the world. Here we have a little arm check, you know, 18 inch arms are most definitely on the way. I don't know how big my arms are with a pump. I think probably like 17 and a half. So if you look at this arm here, this is probably around a 17 and a half inch arm. Finally, we're ending off the workout with a giant set. I actually decided to film all the exercise that I do in this giant set because I usually don't, but I'm going to start doing that just to show you guys so you like get the gist or maybe that's not the right way to saying it. Anyway, if we look at this exercise, if you're a watcher of this channel, you know that is the skiing turtle. And the thing is with this exercise, the way I actually progress this is that I will never change the rep range or go outside of the rep range and very rarely will I actually change the way I'm using, the way I progress this is because I use so many partial reps, the way you actually get better at this is using less partial reps. For example, if one week I do let's say 10 reps and the other 20 are partials, the next week if I do 13 proper reps and then the rest are all partials, that's like progress and that's how I actually get better at this exercise. So you can imagine if for you to go from 10 proper reps to 30 proper reps, it's gonna take an absurd amount of time. So you actually got a lot of progression that can be made on this exercise without actually having to change the weight that you are using. I have sped up this calf raise set. So I actually do this very, very slow and controlled. Now, for me to get big calves, I do nucleus overload with a bit of a twist because I will take it to failure on occasion, which is not what you will usually do. It pretty much just means I'll train calves at every single opportunity I can get. That way I can just build up as much volume as possible in order to force my calves to grow. Let me know if you want more in-depth like video on how I've actually grown my calves. And the final exercise in our giant set is a dumbbell rotators. I have shown this in the past. This basically just means you're going to have such a strong rotator cuff that is going to be a lot less likely that you are going to get injured. The goal for this is to do 10% of your body weight for 10 reps. Right now, I'm using 7.5 kilos, I'm, and I'm getting around like 7 to 8 reps on each of my sets. I do highly recommend you do this exercise. You will find if you do try this and you are very, very weak on this exercise, you should be thankful that you've discovered this weakness, and that will allow you to fix it and therefore avoid any injuries you may get in the future. Recording. Are we re Boom. There we go. Guys, goddamn. Truly, 
Jack stacked and maxed. That's what I'm going to call today's workout. Well, today's video. Jack stacked and maxed. Truly, the arms are just so big, bro. I know I say this every single time, but like, bro, the arms are actually ridiculously big. I feel like I'm going to have a big void in my life once I achieve 18 inch arms because you only want something so badly. And then when you finally get it, it's just like, what do we do from here? That's that is a that's a problem for another day though. I'm I'm sure that that problem will be fixed by 19 inch arms anyway. Enough about arms, because I always talk about that shit. I'm gonna go fill up my car with fuel now, because I'm an adult and I have to do adult things. Then after that. I actually got that workout done relatively faster than I usually do. Most of the time, I feel like I drag my workers on longer than I need to, just because I'll end up uh, chatting to people. You know, I'm a bit of a, a bit of a social butterfly when it comes to in the gym. I like talking to people about working out and stuff. In other settings, I usually keep to myself. But when it's in the gym, I enjoy talking to like other people about how they work out and like because you're always learning stuff right if you're talking to like different types of uh, athletes and stuff you're always like learning uh, so yeah it usually takes longer but today I made sure I was gonna focus to get my workout done at a reasonable pace so I'm gonna have some time when I get home before uh, I get to go to jujitsu so I'm looking forward to that fuel has been acquired gonna go home and have gonna have a little bit of food i've made the mistake of eating too much before doing some intensive exercise and it's not the best thing in the world i might have some of my unflavored whey protein i have mentioned before that i've switched to unflavored whey as if you look at the ingredient on normal protein powder millions millions of ingredients that's very unnatural stuff Therefore, I've switched to a 100% whey organic protein, which is significantly more optimal and healthier for you. Because I used to think that if some, like, it doesn't really matter if something had like bare chemicals, like tons of chemicals in the ingredient list, I just, I'd just be looking at the calories and the protein. Now, uh, my mind has evolved. I've evolved into realizing that health is wealth and that if i'm just eating tons of chemicals and shit it's not gonna it's not healthy it's literally not healthy and it's like some people might like cope and be like oh but the science doesn't prove that it's unhealthy it's like look at it and then like just look at the name of it if you do not know what it is just like it's got some like fancy ass name some chemical it's not natural from a logical standpoint it's not going to be healthy for you people back in the day aren't eating that type of shit I've had a weighted pull-up goal for a long time and I want to start mentioning it to just actualize it, say it into reality. Just like keep mentioning it so once I do achieve it, I've got all these clips of me saying that I'm going to get it because it's a very big goal. And that is a 100 kilo weighted pull-up. I've only mentioned this a couple times, but I want to be able to do that in 5 to 10 years. If I, if I could do a 100 kilo pull up in five years, like, bro, that'd actually be ridiculous. I've been, since I started doing weighted pull ups, that has been my goal. After seeing some Russian guy just do like 100 kilos on a weighted pull, I'm like, bro, that's actually ridiculous. Imagine how big your back would be if you could do that. And me, I want to be able to do it while having big legs, which is even more impressive because a lot of the people who have really impressive weighted pull ups have small legs little bit of traffic here which gives me more time to talk about the weighted pull up right now if i was to max out on pronated grip weighted pull up i reckon i've got 40 to 50 kilos roughly i am like just getting back into the weighted pull ups after the bicep slash brachialis slash something injury in my arm and just getting back to it's like now i'm like a hundred percent good like there's no issue whatsoever 
I reckon, well, I definitely, I would be able to do 100 kilos chin-up before I was able to do the pull-up, but the goal is the pull-up because it's just cooler to be able to do a pull-up, not going to lie. But 100 kilo chin-up would be like a, a lead-up into the 100 kilo pull-up. So by the end of this year, I don't know, I set a goal a while ago. I literally made a video on goals. I have to re-watch that. But at this moment in time, 60 kilo weighted pull-up by the end of the year. That's three plates, which would be really cool. On that incredible bombshell, it is time to end the video. I will be recording every workout, as I said. If I do not record every workout, feel free to call me out for being a complete bitch. And I'll just make sure I record all my workouts. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the video. I'm going to go scran some food, escape this traffic, then go get beat up by some really good MMA fighters and yeah